Welcome back. Julia Clapp joining us from Abbott Wealth Management on this Wednesday afternoon. Welcome back to the show. Thank you, Susan. Yes. We are discussing something today that a lot of people think about. Uh, they know they're entitled to a CPP benefit upon retirement, but how do they come to the to the, the calculated number? Yes. So um, it's kind of nice to get an idea to think about how much you can receive out of the maximum available. Mm -hmm. um, even if you're younger, like thinking about what do I need my income to be to be able to get the maximum sure. that I can out of it? Sure. Um, Let's get into the slides, shall yeah, we? Yeah, awesome. Here's the first one, your CPP benefit. Yeah, so we can just skip ahead to the next one there. Mm -hmm. um, so how it's determined. So it takes your total adjusted pension earnings, mm -hmm. which is um, up to the maximum. So you know how every year, if you make over um, this year, it's 55900 Okay. Um, if you make more than that, then you've already maxed out your CPP contributions. Okay. Um, if you earn less than that, it's whatever your pensionable earnings were, okay. um, which is just an item on your T4, um, essentially just your your income for the year okay. from employment. And then you divide that by your contri contribution period. Yes. So your contribution period is essentially after age 18 okay. until you start receiving CPP. Mm -hmm. um, so... For some people, it's 60, and some people it's 65 when they start taking it, or anywhere in between there, up to 70. Okay. Um, and then that gives you your average monthly pensionable earnings. Um, times that by 25%, and that's your basic retirement pension benefit, which is the base point of your CPP. So Why do you times it by 25? I don't know that. Um, that's just the government formula. So mm -hmm. that's how much they feel like... Um, so you they, get a quarter of that, yeah. basically. Yeah. Okay, fair enough. Um, so that's what you would need to live on, kind of. Sure. Yeah. Yeah. Um, so that gives you your CPP amount. Mm -hmm. um, there's other things like post-retirement benefit or survivor portions mm -hmm. that can be on top of that. Mm -hmm. uh, but that's the basic of it. Okay. And so to increase your CPP benefit, you have to decrease your contribution period. So to bring that up. Okay. So if we look at the next um, next couple of slides here, we'll go over how you can do that. So okay. this general dropout provision is for all um, people who are eligible for CPP. Okay. And it's automatically applied, so you don't have to worry about actually going and applying for it, which is really great. Um, it drops to the lowest 17% of your contribution period, um, which is up to eight years if you take it at 65. Okay. Um, so. For a lot of people, there's either times of unemployment or education where you're not working or um, if you're going on extended travel, take a year off to go traveling. Mat leave, that yeah. sort of stuff. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Um, so that helps to just take those years out of the equation where mm -hmm. they're not even considered. Um, and it's not even necessarily that there's no income. It's just when maybe you only had $10,000 of income that year. Okay. And so this is automatically done? Yes. Or no? Okay. Yes. Okay. So the next one, the child rearing provision, this is one that you have to apply for. Mm -hmm. um, so it's for indiv individuals who take time off work or work less hours or um, had to modify their job in some way mm -hmm. that their income was less Okay. Um, to be that primary caregiver while the child is under seven. Um, they have to also be eligible for the child tax benefit or family allowance payments mm -hmm. um, during that time. And you can't have both parents use that same time period sure. for the child um, in the CPP calculation. Okay, okay. Um, so it's one or the other spouse mm -hmm. um, or parent that has to be the primary caregiver. But unlike the uh, first one, this is not automatic. You actually have to make a concerted effort to yes. get this. Yep. So you have to actually fill out an application form and submit that to CPP. Mm -hmm. um, if you've already applied for CPP and are already taking it, then you can still apply for the child rearing provision okay. and they'll back pay you. Oh, that's nice. Yeah. So that's really great and um, definitely helps increase. Um, generally, it's the woman who's the caregiver, but for anyone who's mm -hmm. taken that time off, um, super, super helpful to increase the Absolutely. payments there. Okay. I think we have two more slides. Um, just one more actually. Oh, one and more. Um, just if for lots of information about Canada Pension Plan, mm -hmm. um, just ways to access it. So. Mm -hmm. There's always updates with it, and especially this time of the year, um, the government is updating those websites with the 
the numbers, the figures, mm -hmm. for things like the income amount. So every year that pensionable earnings number increases. Okay, and of course there's a cap to how much a pension plan from Canada, the, the government will pay you. Yes, yeah, so that has to do with that um, pensionable earnings. Mm -hmm. So because that maxes out at a certain point, so like I said earlier, 55900 is mm -hmm. for this year. Mm -hmm. um, in 2008, it was 44900 Okay. So there's that maximum that you can contribute. So it will never be more than, right now it's um, about $1,100 $1, roughly Okay. Um, each month that you can receive. Okay. All and right. that's that's where that cap comes in, is from the sure. maximum pension learning. All right, good to know. I've always wondered yeah. a little bit about how they calculate that. Yeah. All right, Julia, thank you for being here today. Thank you for having me, Susan. Uh, very welcome to have you. Uh, always great to have you. AbbottWealth.com if you would like to learn more about this or other related topics. We're back up to a quick break. Stay with us.